Are you concerned that some Democrats may not support this? Um, I would hope that all members would support a resolution that condemns terrorism, um, the brutal attacks that were, were perpetrated mm -hmm. against uh, the Israeli people um, that were killed. We have 218 hostages. They took 222. Um, I, I, someone who votes against this, I would think, doesn't have a soul. You just saw comments made by corrupt Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz on October 25th ahead of the House vote for a resolution in support of Israel. Now, as you just saw, she preemptively attacked her Democratic colleagues who would vote against it. Now, at the time, she didn't know specifically who wouldn't support her resolution, but we all had a pretty good idea, as did she, women of color like Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Cori Bush, and others. But she claimed that anyone who didn't support this didn't have a soul, which is an incredibly ironic statement to make because she's Debbie Wasserman Schultz. This is the same person who was forced to resign from her position as DNC chair in 2016 after leaked emails confirmed that she was covertly sabotaging Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign in violation of the DNC's own charter. And on top of that, she was given the nickname Debt Trap Debbie for lobbying against regulations on predatory payday lenders after they donated tens of thousands of dollars to her in campaign contributions. And fast forward to today, and Debbie is still just as corrupt as ever. Now, after taking more than $100,000 from the pro-Israel lobby, she sponsored a resolution on their behalf saying that the U.S. stands with Israel even as they carry out war crimes with bombs that we gave them. And the resolution that she's referring to says that the U.S. stands with Israel as it defends itself against the barbaric war launched by Hamas and other terrorists. The resolution makes no mention whatsoever of proportionality, and it doesn't mourn innocent Palestinians murdered indiscriminately by Israeli bombs. And for Furthermore, it commits to additional aid in Israel and calls for sanctions against Iran. But she's saying, if you don't support that, then you have no soul. Now, leftists did not support it because... Israel's right to self-defense should not include collective punishment, the use of white phosphorus against civilian populations, and in total, nine progressives voted against it. Bowman, Carson, Bush, Green, Lee, Ocasio-Cortez, Omar, Ramirez, and Tlaib. They were also joined by Thomas Massey, and additionally, six Democrats voted present. Kesar, Castro, Velasquez, Presley, Garcia, and Jayapal. Now, the question is, why are we still talking about this resolution? And it's because that resolution caused a lot more friction within the Democratic Party than we initially thought. And we're learning now that Debbie Wasserman Schultz's dumbass comments there, her saying that her colleagues of color don't have souls if they don't go along with her genocidal support, uh, that really pissed them off, apparently. Surprising, right? And this is according to Manu Raju, but he explains what happened after she made that dumbass remark. And that comment sort of uh, prompted outrage among key Democrats, and particularly the 15 who voted against that measure. Some of them, all of them minorities, some of them Muslim Americans, and some of them breathing this directly to the Democratic leader, Hakeem Jeffries, who has sought to tamp down these tensions internally, tried to get his members on the same page as this divide has been growing. We're told that one of the members even talked to W. Wasserman Schultz and was concerned that that is a racial trope that is that would be used, calling someone soulless, uh, something that could be uh, interpreted uh, very negatively among Afro African American members in particular. Wasserman Schultz, we were told, indicated she was not aware of that in, in which she made that comment here. But Dana, all showing the divide that is just persisting as this work carries on, the debate within the Democratic Party that is now spilling out into public view, but very much a private debate as well. So needless to say, she pissed them off so much that one of them actually confronted her about that. Good. I'm glad that these Democrats are standing up for themselves because they're right and she's wrong. They're right about that resolution and they're right about the need for a ceasefire. Now, the fact that this resolution created tension behind the scenes isn't surprising at all, considering the fact that a lot of this tension actually spilled over into the public. For example, Josh Gothheimer, who took nearly $300,000 from the Israeli lobby, condemned his Democratic colleagues on Twitter for not supporting the resolution, writing, Last night, 15 of my Democratic colleagues voted against standing with our ally Israel and condemning Hamas terrorists who brutally murdered, raped, and kidnapped babies, children, men, women, and the elderly, including Americans. They are despicable and do not speak for our party. Now, Andre Carson, one of the Democrats he called despicable here, 
had some choice words for him in response. I think he's uh, uh, not acting in the role as a member of Congress. I think he's shown himself to be very emotional. Like most cowardly people, when you confront them, they're afraid. Uh, I'm unafraid of the guy. And if he wants to call us despicable, I'm saying he's a coward and he's a punk and he should remember why the people sent him here. And if he wants to play some kind of tough guy or gangster, we can handle it like gentlemen and we can get into something else. A pretty strong words that you really don't hear from a member of one the same party going out, even members of opposing parties saying that. I did add, reach out to Godheimer himself and I asked him about Mr. Carson's comments. Godheimer said, said, I'll sit down with Mr. Carson anytime to talk about how we can bring hostages home, including all Americans, provide immediate humanitarian aid to Palestinian civilians being used as human shields and crush Hamas and all terrorists seeking to do us harm trying to de-escalate things. I'm also told that they'll, Carson and Gottheimer are likely to meet, according to a Democratic leadership source. And by now, I'm assuming that they've already met. But I just love that Gottheimer talked shit on Twitter and then immediately changed his tune the moment he was confronted about it. Love it. Democrats like Gottheimer and Wasserman Schultz are genuinely spineless, and they may actually be right about the fact that they represent elected members of their party. But let's be clear, they do not represent voters. The 15 Democrats who they're attacking constantly, those are the ones who are representing voters. Those are the individuals who are representing 80% of Democratic voters who support a ceasefire in Gaza. And these same cowards, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Josh Gothheimer, predictably voted with Republicans to censure Rashida Tlaib along with individuals like Richie Torres and others. And I'm sure that you'll be shocked to learn that all 22 Democrats that voted to censure Tlaib received donations from APAC. What a surprise there. Now, we did a whole video on this, but APAC is a pro-Israel interest group that lobbies on behalf of the Israeli government, not the Israeli people or Jewish people, and they also donate to anti-LGBTQ plus and insurrectionist Republicans. But these Democrats took money from this far-right racist organization, and now they're condemning one of their own colleagues because that's what this organization would want them to do. Now, like the vote on the resolution, the vote to censure also caused a lot more tension within the Democratic Party, and here's some of the immediate responses after the vote took place. Phrases like, from the river to the sea, you're not simply advocating for the creation of a Palestinian state, you're advocating for the destruction of Israel as a Jewish state, and that crosses a line that no member of Congress should ever cross. It's hate speech, and Congress has a right to condemn it. It is outrageous. I am embarrassed for those Democrats who voted to censure their own colleague, who voted against free speech. It is an embarrassment. Listen, I've been critical of Jayapal before, but good on her for calling them out and shame on Richie Torres. You know, as the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, though, Pramila Jayapal could vote to remove Torres from that caucus. And I think that his support for a far-right ethno-nationalist war criminal government is grounds for his removal, considering that that doesn't really scream progressive to me. But I mean, the same 15 Democrats who have been targeted by right-wing APAC shills are seemingly fed up. And they're done biting their tongues. And it's really nice to see them finally fight back and defend themselves. For example, AOC responded to Tlaib Sanchez saying, it is not lost on anyone how many offensive, violent, and racist things people regularly hear members of Congress say, yet virtually the only one that gets censured for her political speech also happens to be the only Palestinian American. It does not reflect well at all. Now, Cori Bush added, it's outrageous that my colleagues are blatantly attempting to silence the only Palestinian American representative in Congress, but it's not surprising. This is the same house that upholds bigotry and racism every day. Solidarity with Representative Rashida, your voice belongs here. And to be clear, it's not just overt bigotry and racism from Republicans. It's casual racism that they also experience from Democrats as well. Democrats like Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Josh Gothheimer, who are quick to scold Muslims and black and brown people within their own party for not falling in line, but yet they don't have that same energy for Republicans like Max Miller or Brian Mast, who are literally calling for a genocide against Palestinians. No, they spend their time condemning the one Palestinian in Congress who's saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't allow Israel to indiscriminately murder Palestinians. But yet, people like Debbie Wasserman Schultz have the audacity to say that people like Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush are the ones with no souls. Mm, actually, they're the only fucking people in Congress with souls, Debbie. And they also possess something else that you lack. A fucking spine. 
So Rashida Tlaib is courageous, as are the other Democrats who are doing the right thing here and challenging the status quo. And the last thing I'll say is support Rashida Tlaib. I'm going to leave a donation link to her in the description box. She is going to be primaried for this, and there's going to be a lot of Israel lobby money against her because she is speaking truth to power and she's persuading people. So that's a threat to the status quo, and she's going to be crucified because of it. So I think that it's incumbent on us to support her during these really difficult times. So support Rashida Tlaib because she is somebody who has a soul, which is why she is acknowledging the humanity of Israelis and Palestinians and individuals like Debbie Wasserman Schultz don't even pretend to care about Gazans.